guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ganymede. Ganymede is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, and takes about 20 to 40 minutes to play the game. It's by Oliver Mutu and Hope S. Huang, and it's by Lucky Duck Games. In the game Ganymede, you're basically going to be Earth... Uh, so people that live on Earth, and you're going to be trying to travel from Earth to Mars, from Mars to Ganymede, and then out into the stars because you need to repopulate and, and uh, I guess, colonize the, the galaxy. And the player who's able to colonize the best is going to be the one that wins. You're going to score points at the end of the game based on the shuttles that you launch off and the points you score with them, as well as achievements and all the other good stuff. It's a game in which you're going to be choosing among, among different actions, and of course you need to gather people from Earth, and you got to take them to Mars, take people from Mars to Ganymede, and these are all requiring actions, of course, and there's bonus ways to get actions and whatnot, and also other ways to uh, ach achieve achievements, in which you're going to get other d different bonus actions, and uh, you're going to take them on a shuttle from Ganymede off into outer space, and those shuttles are going to be of extreme value. Once somebody gets four of them, the round will end, and the player with the most points is the winner. Let's take a look at the game. So here we have Ganymede, and it's set up for two players. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff going on. So we're going to explain it now, and then we're going to go through the entire gameplay as best as I can to give you a good idea of how it works. First thing you see here are player boards. And there's up to four of them, and you play two to four players. This is your achievement area. You're going to start here, and it's going to progress along this track here. Whenever it hits a gear here, you're going to get to take a bonus action. And every time it goes past these areas here, from one, two, three, and uh, so on and so forth, you're going to gain bonus victory points. If it hits here, you'll be able to launch one of these spaceships off into the galaxy for free. Down over here on your player board is going to be uh, your, your your ship cards here, or your, your Earth and your Moon cards. You'll be placing them down there, and that will score you additional chances to launch off, as well as additional bonus victory points from these things here. Up here is going to be your little shuttle action cards that you're going to be placing here. These are these guys here. These are your actions on your turn, but the setup's pretty simple. One on each here. You're going to take shuttle cards from here, four to each player. Choose two of them, and then you can go ahead and discard. You'll discard and shuffle them back into the deck, ones you don't need. Um, and then, I'll just go ahead and put these here. You're going to place them down on the board however you would like that will give you the ability to gain victory points at the end of the game. Because the idea is to go from Earth to Mars, from Mars to either of these portions on Ganymede, and then flying off with your spaceship with the required units. Um, so this is basically the setup of the game. Pretty simple, right? Uh, make sure that you have your Earth and Mars deck set up for four cards uh, from the Earth and four cards from Mars. Your shuttle deck has three here. And then finally, you're going to have uh, this area here, which will have four of them. These are all the different Earth peoples that you're going to have in the different colors because they're basically, they're basically different workers, I suppose. And uh, to start the game off, we'll just select this guy here. And this guy has three actions you can take. And there's three here, and I'll explain them in detail. The first one here is you get to go ahead and pick one of these, or one on the top of the deck there, and place it in the top area here. You can place it in any of those three areas. So if this player wanted, he can go ahead and select this one just like that. This will come out. And then you're going to go ahead and do... Uh, the uh, ability here. The first one here is you get to place a red guy on Earth. Whenever you have a meeple and you have to place it, it always starts on Earth. There's an Earth limit of six and a Mars limit of five. And then, of course, there's limits on these as well. This is three of exactly the same color, and this is one of each color. Uh, this here is you get to take one of these cards. That's pretty useful. Um, then the next thing is the next player will get his chance to go. Maybe they want to, well, they're always going to select here first because you don't need to use these currently because they have, requ have requirements that are going to be need needed to be met. So I'll go ahead and just pick another action. We'll go ahead and select this one here. This one says I can take a purple or I can take a yellow meeple and place it down on Earth. Let's go ahead and go with, uh, let's go with a purple one, I suppose. Uh, then it'll go back to the next player again uh, with one of these flipped over again. Okay, and he's going to look for matching symbols. This symbol here is red, and if he can get another symbol that is red, he is going to be able to get a bonus. And a bonus is a multiplier. So if he got another symbol, another one just like this and put it here, he'd actually get to put two red meeples and take two cards uh, as opposed to just one and one. But unfortunately, that's not the case. He does see that this guy has purple here, and he doesn't want him to get all the purples, so he'll go ahead and put this here. Uh, this is interesting. You can take a purple meeple and put it on Earth, or he can get a uh, experience or achievement bonus. And I think he'll just go with a purple meeple, because we need meeples right now. Uh, the next thing uh, that you could choose to do on your turn as an action, so it will look at this character here, uh, he could choose to take one of these two cards, either the Earth or Mars. Earth only directly relates to from Earth going to Mars, and Mars only relates to from Mars going to either portions on Ganymede. 
And you have to meet the requirements though. And at the top of here is going to tell you the requirements. This says any meeple, but you also have to discard one of these from the top of your board. Uh, this says uh, a, a yellow and a red meeple from Earth. This says a purple, but you have to discard. And this says two reds. And they also provide a bonus as well down here. This one says you get to draw one of these shuttle cards. This says you can turn a purple meeple into any other color meeple. This gives you an achievement, and that lets you turn any meeple into other, any other meeple. For instance, if you wanted to, you could take this card here. You put it down over here, indicating that you have to discard this. And uh, also, you have to have the requirement of a purple, allowing it to move. Now, that's basically what it does. All the, all the meeples of that color will move from Earth over to Mars. And then he gets another bonus, which is that achievement, which allows him to move up. And the reason why he wants to do that is because he needs to get meeples over here. That's the one way to do That's one of the ways to do that. Another thing that's interesting is having all the cards down here, one of each, is going to give you that bonus launch at the end of the game and a bonus launch over here by getting it all the way across this track. And so the game will continue, and more meeples are going to spawn based on people uh, picking them. So he'll probably take this purple here, which means there's only one purple on the board there, which means he gets a double bonus. So he could select two purple meeples and put them on that planet if he wants. Pretty useful, right? The next player over here, he's got nothing once again, so he can go ahead and select whatever he wants. And if he wants, he can actually take this one here. And this one here is interesting because it allows you to get one of the uh, one of the cards here, but it also allows you to move. That's a free movement from one space to any other space, and a movement is simple. It moves from either here, or from here, or to here. Uh, so he will actually go ahead and place, maybe he'll go ahead and put that over there. Uh, when you would get the requirements, so in this case you need one of each type of meeple, you can launch this off, and when you launch this off, you're gonna gain victory points. At the bottom of this thing, it tells you what you gain. In this case, you're gonna get four points, and this actually says it only require, it requires one less meeple, so it won't need all of the colors, it'll need three of uh, different colors, so that's pretty useful. This one over here says you get a victory point for every single one of these uh, purple meeple cards and i think it's referring to uh this up here every every symbol uh, that you have down here that has a purple meeple on it's going to score you a point this one over here is straight five points and this one over here is a uh, two points for every single one of these that you have at the end of the game left over up here so in this case that'd be six points and uh, you're just trying to launch these guys off. As you launch them off, you're going to uh, be able to score victory points, of course. And after you launch four of them off, because you'll be putting a new one down from the ones that you have, every time you launch one, you're going to draw one and choose one and place it down, uh, you're going to continue. Uh, another thing of interest is the last action you can choose to do. So the first one, of course, is to take one of these guys and put it up here and hope for a bonus. Um, another one is to go ahead and choose one of these two, either the blue or the red, and place it down here and move your meeples, provided that you have the requirements from either here to here or here to here. And the final one is uh, my, kind of a discard action. You can discard three of uh, uh, up to three of these things here from the top of your board and take actions. And these are the actions down here. The first one is putting a meeple on earth. Next one is moving a meeple, uh, switching a meeple's color, gaining an achievement, or taking a shuttle card. And you can choose any of those based on the number uh, you discard. So if you discard just one, you get one action. If you discard all three, you can get all three of those actions. But it's at the cost because you're not going to get a bonus anymore as opposed to being able to discard this and get a purple and get triple bonus. That's the cost you're sacrificing. But that's the basic idea of the game, getting your characters all the way from Mars to Ganymede and flying off. First person at the end of the game that gets uh, four off is going to be the winner. So as I was rudely cut off by that plane, you don't actually win after you get four off. After you get four off, everybody takes that round, and then you're gonna score based on your points uh, from your shuttles. And of course, that can be flat out points, or it can be points regarding to what you've played on those spaces. So whether it be extra meeples, or whether it be these little tokens that you're placing up there, there's a bunch of different ways. But whoever has the most points at the end of the game after somebody's launched four after the last round is going to be the winner of Ganymede. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. It's a pretty straightforward game, but there's a lot of symbols in the game and uh, the actions are quite interesting because there's a lot to choose from. Yeah, one action is simply taking a blue or red card but there's four to choose from from each side, and each of them give you a requirement as to what meeples need to be moved from one area to another, as well as a bonus. Another thing to note too, is down below, you get bonuses just like you would up top. So if you launched an Earth uh, vessel, for, you know, if you launch characters from Earth to Mars, and it was a white symbol, and you launched another one from Earth to Mars, if I can find one really quick here, uh, this one here. If it had a bonus down below, that would be doubled. And if there was two, it, you put another one down, that'd be tripled. Same thing uh, that gives you bonuses. Now, these don't usually give you all that many bonuses because they're mainly used for movement, but it is something of note. Uh, when you, so what do I think? Like, when you discard, uh, 
you have three actions, right? And the third one is to discard these tokens here. It gives you a lot of stuff to do and it gives you a lot of variety at a great cost. It's very risky doing that. And uh, what you want to actually do, in my opinion, is build up at the top, make sure you're getting your bonuses as best as you can, find the symbols that match. And if you're uh, aggressive and you want to make sure your opponents are not doing so, you have to hate draft on them and take the symbols that they are looking for because otherwise they're going to skim past you pretty quickly. You got to be very wary. The other thing too is choosing when are these, what, what, what time these cards are best used to move your meeples. Of course, you could discard one yellow and move one or you can move one purple and get this guy. And it's always better, or move you know, these two and get this bonus. These are very important bonuses, especially depending on the shuttles you choose. If you're going for straight flat points, or, or uh, flat points that have lower costs of what meeples are needed, then of course you want to probably win the, uh, end the game early so that you can win, as opposed to players who are building up, trying to gain exactly the different uh, types they need, of the different colors and symbols and meeples. Those players are probably going to be doing more of a build and engine style game. Uh, it's pretty quick. It's fairly simple simple which understand all the different symbols on it and the fact that you can get bonus actions on different portions of the board. Uh, for me, it's funny because this game is great. It really is. It's a lot of fun and there's a lot of like aggressive plays that can happen as well as uh, un unintentional aggressive plays. For instance, I need that last purple one but then she takes it because she needs that purple one and in which case it makes me go insane because I don't get the card I need. And, uh, or, 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 oh, I, I have my green, my red, and my, you know, my, I have my yellow, my purple, and my red meeple on Earth. There's a card there on my next turn. If I can get that, I can move my meeples to Mars and get that bonus, and it'll also help with my achievement. But then it gets taken. Sometimes that can be intentional, and if you're playing with gamers that are pretty, pretty uh, aggressive, then it, that can happen, as well as sometimes it can be unintentional. And either way, it can be kind of frustrating, specifically for me. I realize it's kind of like a, a me thing here as opposed to a game thing, but these type of games drive me nuts. We were playing a live play of this game, and I'm like, I hate this game! And we played it all the way through, and I ended up tying, tying to win. So... I don't know if that's just me being a poor sport or not, but uh, it, it did drive me nuts, the style of play where I want certain things and then I don't get them because other players take them. That, so for you, those of you who don't like that aspect in games or that, that kind of mechanic, you probably want to avoid this one. But otherwise, it's very nice. It flows very easily. It's a very easy setup. Once you've played once, you're not going to have to bother looking at the rules anymore. You're going to understand how it's played. And you're going to be able to teach the game fairly well. Hopefully, I did a good job here. And if not, you can watch our live play uh, on our Unfiltered Gamer Facebook page. We did it this last week. And if you're in the future, then just go ahead and click on our video section. You can find it. It will show you how the game is played. We played it with Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker. It's a good game. The components are very nice. It looks really good. And the theme is excellent. You're going from Earth to Mars to Ganymede, basically the habitable areas in our galaxy system. And then you're going to fly off and find other better areas because you're now farther out to see farther out into the universe. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty sciencey. I like it. Overall, Excellent game, just made me very, very frustrated, and it'll be very unlikely that I play this again really anytime soon. However, I would play it if somebody wanted to play it, and I, I'm not gonna say it's not a good game because it, it really is. I'm seeing past my bias. What do you guys think? Comments in, down below, description, like, subscribe, and comment. Unfiltered Gamer, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys 